What's going on gentlemen? And I can safely say that as of now. Welcome to the first video of the electric go-kart conversion. And I've decided after taking it apart and starting to work on it a little bit that it's kind of more of a UTV or buggy style of thing. So I'm gonna kind of brand it a little differently. Um, super excited to get it started. Today we're gonna to go over the teardown and the plan and show you the components for what we're going on here. And also go over the design for the battery, that kind of thing. So we'll have a, a lot of information going out in the first stages of building. The next video, we'll be working on building the 12 volt system and uh, just getting started on some of the actual work of it. So stay tuned for the whole series. Uh, I'll try to make it as compact as I can, but ultimately everything that I do, I will film and I will post for you guys. A full start to finish conversion. Super excited to take you along for the ride. So let's get to it. You can see it's actually a pretty cool piece of machine as it stands right now. Full suspension, front wheels are pretty small. So what we're gonna do is get some 18 inch wheels, rims and wheels, actually gonna be aluminum rims, look pretty dang sweet. It'll level it out and it'll kind of have more of a side-by-side -side look at the end of that, that's my goal. We're gonna to need to take these bars here and chop them and put them a little higher and a little further in, just so that the wheels don't rub when the uh, steering wheel turns. The electronics up here, the ignition switch, all that stuff, None of that works. Uh, this down here, it's about, a, I think it's a 125 motor and probably put down just a couple of horsepower. And it was just too slow to be a lot of fun. So we're gonna take it and try to maybe give it five times the power, we'll see. And we're gonna put the battery right here. I'm gonna lay it down flat. That's the last piece that we'll get in. I do already have a lot of the components. I got the speakers, I got the controller, I got the DC to DC converter. I got the ignition switches, all that kind of stuff. What my plan is, I got also lights, a light bar, headlights for the front. My initial plan is to wire in everything that's 12 volt because that all came from Amazon. That gets here quick. The things I'm waiting on from AliExpress are the batteries, all the components to build the batteries, the charger, the contactor, um, this the system from battery to controller. I don't have any of that stuff. I'm not going to get that for about a month. So my goal is to get all the 12 volt stuff done, frame modified, build myself a little panel here, a, a console where you can have a cigarette lighter, a USB, um, a place to mount a phone. Just everything, you know, voltage meter, temperature gauge, that kind of stuff. I might just put a, you know, in the back here, maybe, just a little uh, bracket that holds a piece of stained wood or something like that. I'll think of a cool way to approach that. The guy that I'm working on it for wanted to be able to have a space to put an ice chest in here. We're gonna see if we can get this flat enough so they can still slide one in. Possibly, if we bring the battery case up to the level of this bar, the ice chest could slide in, you know, parallel to the direction of the cart. So we'll play with that, see what that looks like. Um, I'm gonna go over all the components. I'm gonna go over the price sheet with you guys here in a second. But for now, I'm gonna start to take this apart and just see, you know, what we're looking at. First day of work on this done. So I got back out here later. It's actually super early in the morning. What is it, like 6 a.m.? 5.30 a.m. Sun is barely coming up. I got out here about midnight. So I worked for five hours and then cleaned up for another half hour. We took out all of the gas components, as you saw. I did leave the brake as the one thing that's attached. I pulled the choke, I pulled the throttle. I pulled some wires that were running towards the back here. I'm gonna start by modifying frame and actually painting. I'm gonna take care of everything that is modification first. That means I gotta put it together one time and then I'm done. So what I'm planning on doing at the front here is connecting between these two 
points there, making a little bit of a dash console. It's gonna have um, the plugs for USB, just a generic household plug, and a cigarette lighter. Um, above that, up here, we're gonna have the controls for the lights. I'm gonna mount a light bar up on top. We're gonna take this whole panel off. It all just unscrews from the bottom. We'll put a light bar up there. In the front down here, probably just there and there, I'll put on two little flood headlights. I'm gonna separate each of these components where it bolts on so this roll cage will come off. And then we'll take off the back axle with this swing arm. We'll pull that off for painting. These shocks are super stiff and they're actually in good shape. These front ones are soft and not in great shape. I'm gonna replace the front shocks. There was actually a little bit of an issue with when I had it standing up. The attachment points for the bottom end of those struts um, actually got hit by rocks and whatever else as it drove across the ground because it didn't have much ground clearance. I may need to straighten some of those out and uh, kind of do some welding on that. My only concern would be that the wheels are offset differently, you know, further back or forward or they're not aligned correctly. So if I identify that's an issue, I may need to rework some of those connection points. But otherwise, the structure is in excellent shape. I went ahead and cleaned up, ground off the points where those things I pulled off attached. Now this is the cool panel here actually. This is where I'm going to be housing the DC to DC converter. It had a lot of electronics going into it. I haven't opened it up yet. Uh, I was going to and then I just, it's kind of late. So I'm going to try to get home in time for church and not, <laughs> not really get a night of sleep. Um, but I'm going to pop that open. Put the DC to DC converter in there. Any other odd electronics, relays, that kind of thing, I'll go ahead and house them inside of that so you won't see them. And then there's just little spots in the bottom where cables can come out. You can see down there. And so I'll be able to house everything and run it out and it won't see a mess of wires anywhere. So let me actually show you all the components. I got a box of some of the goodies that came in here. This is the motor, the ME1718, uh, up to 300 amps for two minutes, continuous rating is 100 amps on this unit. It's super linear and predictable power band based on the graphic they sent. One thing that I had a lot of struggles with today was this axle, and it actually attaches on there in a weird way where there are brackets that kind of bolt in, and it's got almost no tolerance for error, and I could not get it to rehouse until I stood it up on its butt. Um, and then I was able to work on it freely. I do need to take off, this was a, a one of those tightening joints where you twist the thing in the middle and it pulls it together or moves it apart. And it was attached to the differential. And so I gotta figure out how to get that off of there. Um, it's conveniently right next to the sprocket, which is going to be replaced. So as soon as I figure out, I may have to take it off, take all of these sheathings off, because these actually spin independently over the solid axle. I'm gonna need to strip everything off down to this point to pull those two things off. But those look like they're held on by set screws that are kinda of rusted. So I'm not looking forward to that. I'm gonna hold off on that until the time comes. Um, the motor we're gonna mount, obviously in line with that sprocket. I think I'm gonna mount it more towards the front here rather than towards the back. Previously, there was a shaft up higher that connected into this point that connected downward. I might want the gear to run from the front down this way. I plan to mount the controller possibly right on here. Um, I think I might have the motor and the controller on the uh, unsprung weight portion of this axle. This whole housing, obviously, it hinges back there, and so this whole thing compresses. The battery's gonna sit up on top. It's a super cool battery. The one thing that I think is pretty cool is we got actually a little speaker system that just wires into 12 volt Bluetooth. I'm gonna hook that up either, and maybe suggestions on this, either on top of the battery so that it's like at head level, or maybe up on top of this rack here, facing forward. I don't want it on top of it, I don't think. I'm gonna have it like underneath this rack. I don't think I want it on top just because it's gonna be raising the height. It's the first thing that gets hit by branches. It's unprotected. Just kinda look through some of the things that we got. Um, I got my relays. In case we need those. This DC to DC converter actually is super powerful. 300 watts, uh, and so it actually has a key input, which is basically a built-in relay. So I don't need a relay for my contact, which is actually still coming from AliExpress as well. 
Um, those are the headlights. Here's the light bar. I've got the tail light in here. So 428 chain. I got a 56 tooth sprocket for the back. Um, buttons for the horn. Got an ignition switch. Everything's in, ready to roll. We're gonna take the 12 volt, turn it to five volt. We're gonna also invert it back to AC so we can plug in household things to this. Uh, basically, you've got a seven kilowatt hour battery pack that you're, you know, you could take up camping, whatever else. Might as well use it as a mini generator, was my thought. So this will be like a UTV, all purpose utility vehicle. That's the main intention of it, so. Honestly, the more I work on it, the more excited I get about it. I would say my enthusiasm for this tops where we were at with the um, Electric Cafe Racer. I did mention this controller. Um, it's a 500 amp. So we'll go ahead and sign up for now. Um, I'll cut over to looking at some of the components so you can see you know, the cost of things. I did get some things straight from manufacturers. I got some things um, secondhand. Controller I got for like $200 shipped from Florida. So there was some cost savings, uh, but I did end up running over my two grand budget slightly as I started putting in the ons and the ends. Some of those e-bikes that Ninja reviews cost, you know, 2,500. And this is so much more functional. It's got a 60 mile range, faster high, you know, top speed, faster acceleration, carries two people. I mean, speakers, plug anything you want to into it, take it off road. Take it to the dunes. I mean, possibilities are endless. Here's the full parts list and the cost of each of those parts. I got links included here so I can find things again easily. Everything's also been in my uh, purchase uh, order history. And so I'll put all of these links in the description of each of the video as we are installing them. I won't have them up front. There is a small chance certain things change. And as things change, I don't want to have an outdated parts list. You never get a perfect order off the bat. Um, some of these things I got straight from manufacturers or um, on a used site. And so the cost that I have here, $26.75 is the full pre-tax cost on this build. And that includes things I went overboard on and it also includes extra cells for another project that I got going on. So realistically, this would be less than $2,500 pre-tax had I uh, not started putting in all kinds of weird sockets and making it super functional basically was my goal. So here's the list. Um, effectively, the motor, the controller you've already seen, the cells. I'm going to show you the project, the design I have for that battery. That's the most exciting part of the build in my opinion. It's a pretty one of the kind pack that I'm putting together and I'll walk you guys through that. I got another uh, design file for that that I'll pull up in a second. BMS charger. I went a little bit high on the charger. I wanted to get a 10 a 10 amp charger, which would charge the whole pack. It's 80 amp hours, so it'll charge the whole pack in uh, 10 hours time from empty to full. So you can play with it all day. 60 mile range. I mean, knock yourself out, and then the next morning it's ready to go when you're done with it. I did get some specific bus bars for the design of the pack. I'll walk you through that again. So I just made a little calculator here, a gearing calculator, um, that kind of calculates sprocket size based on goal top speed. And with the front sprocket of 11 teeth, I just got the rear sprocket in. The rear sprocket has 56 teeth on it. My goal was to be able to, at the minimum operating voltage, which effectively is going to be about 72 volts, so it's the peak um, workable voltage realistically is going to be about 80 volts on this pack. It's a 77 volt nominal pack. It's a 24S lithium iron phosphate. Um, it's going to be at about 50 miles per hour at the minimum voltage of 72. So even at the end of the day when it's all burned out, um, you'd still be able to get up to 50 miles per hour. So we'll get 55 miles per hour as long as everything works as expected and the our, the KV for the motor is what I'm anticipating. We'll get 55 miles per hour on the top charge and 50 miles per hour on the bottom end of the charge. As far as the battery pack design goes, pack's pretty unique. It actually uses uh, lithium iron phosphate cylindrical cells. They're 33 millimeters in diameter and 130 millimeters in length. Um, each of those contains between 15 and 17 amp hours. And so if you average that out, uh, to 16, we're looking at an 80 amp hour pack. Uh, we're going to run five in parallel, 24 in series. Uh, these are each going to be connected in parallel using 8 gauge copper um, ground wire effectively. It's just insulationless. We'll straighten out the wire and we'll just solder it down into the tops of those cells, uh, top and bottom. So on the, each of these parallel connections will be connected uh, positive and negative with that 8 gauge wire. 
We're going to connect each of these series connections with a copper bus bar that has an equivalent cross-sectional area to a 6-gauge wire. Roughly two of those combined puts it close to a 2-gauge, a little bit more towards the 3-gauge size, uh, but still a lot of current capacity. Each of these cells' continuous current ratings is 75 amps, and if we have five of those in parallel, the continuous current that's being flowing through the pack would be capable of being as much as 375 amps. Um, 75 amps from here to here is all that we're being asked on this 8 gauge wire. Not something that's not possible to do, very very safe for that, that amount of rating. And so if I put these bus bars in the middle, it's going to have 75 amps at most flowing down that 8 gauge wire at any point in time, right? This middle one can split it half and half, so we're looking at 37 and a half amps going each direction, right? So this 8 gauge wire is very capable of handling that. As we flow through the pack then, it's going to go, you know, negative, uh, and it's going to go flow underneath and then above and underneath, right, the whole way down. We get to this point, these five and these five are connected in series across the top. So I'm going to lay two bus bars stacked on top of each other running this direction, which allows the current to then go from this would, I guess, technically be negative to positive. And then this will then flow through the pack the same way that it had uh, up to this point. Across the top on this end for the positive and the negative discharge ports, I'm going to go ahead and just have one bus bar stacked on here. And if we do that and we put it in the center, what we're going to see is 2 times 75, so 150 amps flowing. And that's totally capable to do with a 6 gauge uh, connection. These will then discharge out of a single point. I got the BMS attached here. Each balance wire is going both directions to each of these positive locations. One on the one negative cell terminal, one on the one on the 24 positive cell terminal. So we have one on each end, and then all the positive connections are connected from there. Obviously, we'll also have charge cables. So I'll add a charge cable on probably the ends of each of these. Uh, smaller gauge, probably 10 gauge or so. This pack is held in place by. Um, it's going to have. A grid of brackets effectively like you'd have for those those plastic holders you'd have for 18650 so think of this just like a blown up version of an 18650 pack um, the cells very unique the design of this never been done before with this size of a cell the amount of power that it puts out is going to be far and above more than what the controller is going to be asking for the 500 phase amp controller is probably only going to ask for 280 amps I would say still 280 amps at 80 volts gives us 22,000 watts of, you know, motor input power, not the power that the wheels end up seeing. In horsepower, that puts it at 30 horsepower, accounting for some reductions, let's just say an 80% efficiency. We're still going to see 24 horsepower at the wheels. So having this continuous current rating of this pack is going to allow us to tune the controller as aggressively as we need to be able to see the maximum output that um, we're capable of getting. These components get here on August 23, and so you can expect to see me start building that around that time. I'm going to put it in a fiberglass case, so that'll be a, a new process. It'll be faster than using an aluminum or a steel case, which has its own sets of concerns. you got to insulate very well with fiberglass case insulation. We'll still have some, but not to the extent that we had previously uh, for those ones. So I'm excited to show you guys this pack. It'll be one of a kind. Honestly, I've never seen anything built like this. I just designed it based on my needs, and it'll be... Very functional, something that you could do at home with minimal tools. I mean, that's no spot welding. I'm going to make sure that you don't need to heat the cells up too much because we're connecting 8-gauge wire onto it. We're not connecting a full bus bar onto each of those. But we're going to run the parallel connections first. Um, so it'll be safe for the cells. It'll be easy to be done at home. I mean, I did buy a $50 soldering iron. It's a giant, fat, huge thermal mass soldering iron. I've enjoyed having it tremendously. I've been able to solder onto anything I want to solder onto and do it quickly. The bigger the iron, the safer it is for the cells because the heat hits faster. Um, so we're going to do it in a way that it really anybody could do. And the pack itself for a 7 kilowatt hour battery, um, after all the bus bars and everything's purchased, we're looking at like 900 bucks. So very reasonable. I mean, obviously, wow, that's an expensive thing. But for 7 kilowatt hours, $900, pretty dang good. Uh, if you were to buy a 7 kilowatt hour pack pre-created with the capability of putting out the current that we're building here, I would say probably three to four grand. I mean, nothing that you could find for anywhere near this price range. So something that we're, I'm, I'm really excited to, to build and show you guys the process and give you the links for. Uh, it's going to be about 70 pounds worth of cells, I want to say. So 80 pounds all said and done is what I would anticipate. So not unreasonably heavy for the amount of density that we're getting. So there we have it. That's the full plan. That's the start to the project. Uh, looking forward to giving you updates as we have them. Um, and stay tuned for those as they come out. Until then, I will catch you all later. Thank you.